Stevie Fast Jackson KTR here to talk about nitro always contaminating the shot. I love turn the camera on the people gonna be around. Here. KTR inside the shop with a technical piece on lockup torque converters. Now we've done a little bit on this about a year ago in the past, a little brief rundown of, of, of torque converters. We're going to do a more in-depth look at the lockup torque converter as well as service and maintenance. Uh, my inbox on social media and my email has been flooded since we took the Barker Max Mobile out. Uh, in two runs we went 566 at 253. Um, the data logger didn't work for any of this, so we had no drive shaft data. Uh, so it's really hard to make a converter stator pump change without that. Um, we just are assuming that it, it looks like it's a little too loose. Uh, just looking at where the engine's rolling over. We got uh, engine RPM data, just no drive shaft. We still don't have drive shaft data. Uh, something's wrong with that data logger. We're fixing it. Uh, but anyways, 566 in two runs. Looks like the converter's a little loose. So we're gonna do an in-depth uh, analysis of the Neil Chance uh, Racing Converters Lockup Torque Converter, clutch pack maintenance, uh, how to look at bearings and signs of failure, as well as what the stator package looks like, how to put the sprag in correctly, and how uh, what a stator change will do to your engine and your performance. Uh, this is gonna be an exciting piece. Thank you guys for riding with me. Let's get into it. Now the absolute most crucial piece to any torque converter maintenance project is a highly specialized tool that I found in the Philippines. The stainless steel salad bowl from Walmart. I cannot tell you how invaluable this tool is. When you pull the converter out of the car and it's hot and there's full of fluid, the first thing you want to do is drain it. Well, everybody puts it in a plastic bucket and the plastic bucket falls over, caves in. This Walmart salad bowl we have been using for about a decade and it fits a lockup <laughs> Neil Chance Racing Torque Converters perfectly. So I'm gonna find these, figure out where I got it, buy some, we'll patent it, and then I will uh, sell it to you guys for like $30 a piece. Uh, takes a little bit to get the fluid out of the converter. You won't get all of it, there'll still be some in the clutch pack, but you at least wanna get it below the level of the parting line between the drive cover and the turbine. Uh, if you don't, when you take it apart, it just makes a mess. Um, so I normally, when I pop it out, I'll let it sit there, do a little maintenance. Now, as you guys can see, this thing uh, looks like it's been drugged through a swamp. <laughs> it uh, was sitting around, riding around in a box in a trailer for a couple years, and we got this thing and uh, just put it in there. So aesthetically on the outside, it doesn't look good. Internally, she's uh, functional and ready to rip. So out of the salad bowl into the operating room. Uh, these things have two dowel, two roll pins uh, that align the cover to the drive. Get you a little small toolbox and put you a kit together uh, that's got your essential tools. It doesn't take a lot to take these things together, but we have a little kit uh, with the right size punch, a hammer, a socket, and a torque wrench so that we can change them. Uh, knock them down, don't knock them all the way out, just knock them below the cover. A lot of you guys will take these pins out and throw them away because they're a pain in the butt to put in and out. Uh, don't do that. That's your alignment procedure for the cover. Not only do the bolts um, align it, but the, the pins are what, what centers that cover. So do not take them out and throw them in your toolbox. Roll pins out. Now for NHRA, we, are, we have to run a mandated locking nut on the back side of these bolts. Uh, I've already removed these, but if you haven't, you've knocked the nuts off the course. We, that's a silly rule also that somebody left some bolts loose one time in the 80s and the cover leaked or something. So we, uh, you know, when we're testing running through torque converter parts, we don't put those on. Anytime we haul it to the event, they're on there uh, and, and ready. For it. Buzz the bolts out. A lot of people don't like this. I use a little electric pack, three eighths, four eighths. All works good. Knock everything off the table is good. All right, all our cover bolts are out. Uh, the little bit of the anatomy, so you guys will kind of know what I'm talking about uh, in here. The This is the pump. The front round thing that you see on top is called the pump. This is what I call the snout. I don't know what most people call it. The back side of it is the drive cover. Uh, that's what bolts to the engine. That's what drives the converter. As we dive into it and get inside, we'll talk a little bit more about the internal pieces. 
Um, be careful when you pull this up. If you don't have enough fluid out below this parting line, fluid will dump out. Um, we did a pretty good job of sustaining it. Now, this is a, a, a what we call a big bore torque converter. Two different types of, of lockup, uh, standard, two different types of standard uh, Neil Chance lockup torque converters. You got a big bore and a small bore. Um, small bore is better suited for small lock applications, some supercharged stuff, um, things that can't accept load really quickly, things that need to be far looser. Uh, now, when, this, when we got this, the Barker Max car, it probably needed a small bore uh, in it, but now that we're making real horsepower and that we got real jets and stuff in it, uh, it's got a big bore in it. This is called the stator. You'll pull this thing out. Now there's shims and bearings up under here. Uh, I'll move a little closer so you guys can see it. Um, you wanna make sure when you pull this out, have you a clean cloth? This back race will always stick to this, to this stator cap. Just stick it back in there. I'll show you guys as we go through it how to stack that. Also a bearing on top. First thing I do is look at the top bearing, spin it, make sure it's good. Uh, make sure, sure there's no in play, make sure it's not blue. If this thing is blue, not only does it need to be replaced, but you have an internal clearance problem. Either your internal clearance on your torque converter is not enough, you don't have enough torque converter to flex plate uh, and it's too engaged into the drive unit or something like that. So this thing looks good. Um, it's only made two, two runs, so it's good. Now this is a, uh, when you see the stator, on the back side, depending on when the stator was made, they're in different spots, but this big bore stator uh, will have on the turbine side uh, a description. Now, that is uh, a BBHF, that's big bore high flow. Uh, the next thing will be a set of numbers. This is a 20V40. Uh, what that means is, is there's 20 blades in here and the, the angle of those blades is 40 degrees, pretty simple. And then it'll say uh, turbine side. That lets you know that when you put the stator back in the drive unit, uh, back in the torque converter, sorry, not the drive unit, uh, that that side goes towards the turbine. Uh, this is the stator cap. There's two snap rings in here, and then there's a sprag. We're going to go over. First thing we're going to do is change the, the internals of the stator and get the new stator ready to go in. Then we're going to dive into the torque converter and talk some, about some of the do's and do nots, um, as well as uh, common mistakes that I've made throughout the years that absolutely destroy your entire program. All right, the next key tool to any stator change it's Christmas time, boys. The FedEx is here and Nitro is on the FedEx truck. Poor dog. The next key tool. <laughs> if you can find you a torn up ATI balancer shell, this thing will fit this stator perfectly. <laughs> so when you're changing the stator and you go to knock that cap out, it gives you a spot to knock it out. Also a special tool that I found by accident. I need to call my boys at ATI and get them to make that. But that is a stator changing tool. Pocket screwdriver. Now there's two snap rings on this thing. There's one under the bottom stator cap that's basically captured. It, it can come out, but it's very difficult to get out. You can see that the gap right there is not a lot. Then there's the one on the pump side that has a better access. Always pull that top pump side snap ring off. It'll make your life easier. And uh, this thing right here stabs you immediately in the finger, so don't get close to it. This point right here, when you're peeling that off, you get a hole in your finger. Hole in your finger. Pop that to the side. Now, depending on how much this thing's been run, uh, sometimes you can push the, the cap right out this way. If you've ran it a bunch of times and it's seated in there or stuck, uh, just flip it over and then take a rubber hammer. And you can just very gently knock that stator cap out. You want to keep that stacked. If you're not very fluent with this, keep that stacked up. And we'll talk a little bit about it in a second. All right, so here is our 566 stator. It is out. I don't ever pull this back snap ring out of these. Uh, new stator, when you buy one from Marty Chance, comes with uh, two snap rings, and I just leave that in there. I'll put that thing in the parts washer, clean it up. That way, if we go out there and it doesn't run world record ET on the next run, I can put this back in there and I don't have to mess with that stator. Okay, stator cap, sprag. A uh, very common mistake that me and everybody else has ever raced torque converter cars, regardless of who they are, has done is put this in upside down. 
if they tell you that they have never done that, they're either lying to you or they have dementia. Because uh, this is when you're thrashing between rounds, you got to make a stator change. Um, you're, you have done this wrong before. After you work on this a couple times, it becomes far easier. I'm going to show you how to never make that mistake. It's a pain when you put this thing back together and you got to take it back out. All right, so we got our new stator. Now we're going to go from a 20 V40 uh, and we're going to stick in a, see if you guys can see that. I don't know if you can see that or not. We're going to put in a 20 V45. Um, now, if you guys don't speak, yeah, I think you can see that. If you guys don't speak, chance, every torque converter manufacturer is different. And every stator angle does a little bit of different things. Generally on these, if you're working on a big stinky nitrous motor, going up five degrees of stator angle is going to tighten it up about three to 500 RPMs, depending on where you're at. If you're way on the loose side, it won't be that much. If you're way on the tight side, it'll be more. But generally, on the rollover of the engine, you're looking at about 500. Now, we got big grown man jets on this thing, so we want to get it snugged up. So, drop converter turbine side in your torque converter service tool. Remember, your stator cap goes in first. That thing can be a little tricky getting it around the snap ring just because it's a tight fit, as you can see but just kind of walk it in there, it'll go. Don't hit it, don't beat it in there. You shouldn't need to do any of that. If you need to start pounding on it, then you have a burr on your snap ring and you need to take your snap ring out. So it'll, it, it'll go, I see guys just beating on it. All right, this thing, uh, there's a burr behind that snap ring. That's what I was talking about, so it won't go in. That means that last time I put the snap ring in there, I either got, I'm, I have a bad habit of wearing rubber gloves when I'm working on these things and they'll get a, be a piece of glove stuck up under there. Yeah. See, there's a little piece of material right there. See? I'm going to learn why I'm teaching. But if you'd got the old Hammer 9000, the old BFH out, and knock that bad boy in there, you'd have bent it, and then it'd have come out, and then it'd wreck your drive unit, tear up all your equipment. So get that thing in there. See, when there's no piece of aluminum, it'll snap right in there, lay her down. All right, spread. Remember when I talk about this being the turbine side, we're gonna talk about the turbine in a little bit. Turbine is this way. When that says turbine side, that goes in there. That stator goes in like that. When you put your sprag in, I want you to think about looking through the hole that the input shaft goes in, the top of the torque converter. This piece, okay? Right is right. If you remember that, you will never fail this. And what that means is when you got that thing from the top, you want it to click to the right clockwise. If you have that thing in upside down and it's clicking left, left is no bueno. Left is you put your car in gear and it shuts off. It won't go to the trans brake. Uh, it'll run like other nitrous cars on the planet. Uh, so don't do that. Drop that thing in. And if it clicks to the right clockwise, you are in the game. Yeah, baby. Top stator bearing cap. Snap ring. And the other thing is, is if you're not working in ATI 9000 uh, super torque converter holding fixture, that bottom stator cap is laying on the table and it's trying to push this top skater, stator cap up and it's hard. So I don't know, ATI is gonna have to send me a uh, commission on that. All right, so when you're holding that thing, that thing will click to the right. We're gonna go ahead and service the torque converter. We'll get this thing set in there in a little bit. All right, this is the next thing we're gonna work on. This thing has got a little bit of fluid in it, I'm sure. So the Walmart salad bowl KTR 9000 will come in handy. This is the, the, the shim and bearing stack that I was talking about. See if you guys, if I can get you guys a little better angle of that. So in here there is, normally when you get a new converter, there is uh, one race, one bearing, one race. And it goes just like that. A bearing, a race, I'm sorry. <laughs> It goes just like that, a race, a bearing, and a race. That's pretty standard. You don't want to get those mixed up. Again, look at your race, look at your bearing, make sure they're not blue or torn up or damaged. If they're blue or black, you don't have enough internal clearance in there. Uh, so we're gonna pull these out and set these to the side. This piece here is called the turbine. Now on a lockup torque converter, the turbine is very integral in how the lockup works. So. When you pull this out, you're gonna lose a little bit of fluid. There's also gonna be a race stuck to the bottom. So don't forget, you need to pull the race off the bottom. 
when you take it out and you haul it over to the parts washer and you drop that race off into the parts washer and then you don't put that back in there, you get to take it back out. So This thing has a hub welded to the back of it that engages the clutch pack. When you pull this out, as you can see, we got some fluid. There's my race I was talking about. Now these races and bearings are the same as the go on top of the turbine. Uh, I always keep them intact because I'm gonna measure them. But if you get them mixed up on that thing, it doesn't matter. I don't ever clean this thing in our Sonic cleaner. If it's trash something, I'll clean it in the parts washer. I don't ever like to get the turbine super clean and let it sit because it is metal and it'll rust. If you, if you start working on it and you don't get to run the car soon or don't get fluid in it soon, then, or it sits in the converter and you don't make a run soon, it'll rust. So if it looks good, if this thing is good, I'll maybe blow it out a little bit, but I'm not going to, to cl overly clean it. This is the hub I was talking about. This actually engages your lockup clutches and steels. And then there's a surface on here that actually engages the top clutch in the lockup torque converter. That race I was talking about that fell off, uh, it'll be stuck right here. So when you pull that thing up, if it doesn't fall off, it's gonna have a race stuck there. Just get you a magnet, get you a screwdriver, pop that thing right off. Um, set this to the side, this is the turbine. And then you got your drive cover. The seal will be stuck around the drive cover. Sometimes it'll pop off when you pull the thing in there, just be mindful of it. You have, in the top of the drive cover, you have the other mating piece of that race, a bearing and a race. Again, make sure that um, that thing's not damaged black or blue. When you go to dump the fluid out of this, you can see it's full of fluid. Hang on to your clutch packs and your steels. Just grab it with your thumb and dump that fluid out. If you don't do that, all that crap falls out. You don't know if it was stacked up properly and you don't know how to put it back together. We're gonna go through just a from scratch um, way to do that. Now, if you haven't ever worked on one of these before, pull your clutch pack and steel pack out one piece at a time. So take your clutch pack out and then put a steel. On all of Marty Chance's torque converters, I run a clutch pack on top because that bottom side of the turbine is surfaced to be used to act against the friction material. Clutch pack, clutch, uh, clutch on top, then a steel. This thing will be stacked together through that just like any transmission, any automatic, any manual transmission will always be a clutch, a steel, a clutch, a steel. This will be no different. Clutch steel, clutch steel, clutch steel. Now I'll look at each one of these as I'm taking them out and I'll also look for debris. Uh, if you got any big chunks of anything, um, these things are wavy or warped or black or mowed down, then you're, you're either past their service life or something's wrong internally. Steel. There's six clutches and six steels um, in a normal uh, torque converter that you get factory from Marty Chance. Now I have in the past had some stuff that people have blown up or tore up that you end up running uh, an additional something here or there to take up internal clearance, but uh, generally you won't have to do that. Okay, so we got our clutches and our steels out. Um, we're gonna clean them in the parts washer and then I'm gonna show you how to measure them and what they should measure and when to replace them. Now, I got my clutch pack. Uh, I am, you can clean these off in the solvent tank. You can clean them off um, with brake cleaner. That's what I normally do. Don't get water on the friction material. That's pretty, pretty standard on any clutch, you know, clutch pack. I'll just kind of spray them off. I don't want to spend a lot of time cleaning them unless, in case they are, uh, need to be replaced and shot out. Um, I'm going to take my caliper and smoke across them. Uh, steel's about 85 thousandths. Um, Normally, unless you see a steel that's black and or blue, you will not uh, replace it. If you, tear, if you tear something up, they can be tore up. A lot of times if you've run them for seasons, the edges of the tangs that engage with the drive cover will get worn. Uh, these things seem to be okay. Clutch pack, 72 and a half thousandths new. Don't know how we come up with the half. It's probably just my caliper off. If you want to be exact, measure these things with a mic. Um, normally, I'm not hunting for a half a thou. I replace these things when they get to 65 thousandths. Uh, there's six clutches, six steels in there. So you figure if you're seven thou light on clutch material per disc, um, you know, you're looking at 30, 40 uh, thousandths over the course of the pack. 
that'll get too much piston travel. That'll cause you to have an O-ring or an internal clearance problem. Um, I just put these in there. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time measuring. If this was a customer's torque converter, or this was something that I didn't know about, I would clean this stuff up perfectly. I would measure it on a surface plate, um, or I would measure it with a mic in a bunch of different places. I'm just gonna kind of smoke through the pack. Uh, it looks visually to be perfect, you know, 69. So we're, yeah. Good. 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 All right, so my pack's in pretty good shape. Uh, next thing we're gonna talk about is the drive cover and the piston that goes in there. Now, the way a lock-up torque converter works, uh, this is gonna, I'm gonna smoke through this really fast. You've got a, whether you have a TH400 or you have a tie drive uh, or a quick drive, whatever you're gonna run, you'll have a solenoid in your drive unit that when you activate, when you call activating the lock-up, uh, it's gonna put fluid into the backside of this piston. Now here's a, just a standard um, drive unit shaft. It'll have two snap rings here that are missing. You'll see a hole right there. Those seal that hole. When you apply your solenoid, fluid goes into the hole on the input shaft through it. It'll be hollow on the end and it will go into the, uh, the hole that's inside the, the drive cover. There's three holes machined in there that will allow fluid to get behind the piston. The piston pushes on the clutch pack, uh, clutch and steel pack against the turbine, locks the turbine up with the engine, and your engine and drive shaft are one to one. Um, this just fits in there with an O-ring, and uh, fluid will go from here and push that piston out. Now, what'll happen is if you are, if you've made too many runs, and your clutch pack clearance is worn, or say you've been running for two seasons, your converter won't lock up. You're going down through there. You got six percent of slip. The converter is active. If you're monitoring fluid pressure, you'll notice that your pressure falls off at the end of the run. When it does that, if it does that, you have a sealing O-ring problem on your piston. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to take this piston out and look at the O-ring. Uh, let me give you three words, of, three phrases of advice. Take this with a grain of salt, be gentle, and don't have anybody around you because when you shoot this piston at them and pump fluid all over them, they get angry. Now, the first time we did this, I was like, I told Phil and Jack and Robert and Robbie and Billy, I was like, I got this. I'm going to shoot some air in there and shoot that piston out. That's what I do. Do not take your rubber tip blow gun and stick it in that hole and drop the hammer. When you do that, you have no idea the capabilities of this piston to go vertical. The first time I did it, it knocked me in the head, squirted fluid all over everybody, and I thought I'd been hit by a Mack truck. So now, use the blow tip. We want to, like a turbo car, barely put a little pressure in it. When you hear air, the piston is up. Stop. See that? Piston's up, nobody died. It's pretty good. Saving you guys three visits to the emergency room. Um, take this thing on a flat surface, a table. You do not have to slam it down. It will just simply fall out of there. Give her a little taparuski, and there she is. This piston, you want to look for wear. Uh, it really won't wear. There's not anything really to tear up. Um, I'll look at the surface. There's a steel that lays on this bottom surface, so it's not going to get scarred up, tore up, and beat up. The main thing that we're looking at is the O-rings. There's an external O-ring here, very easy to pop off and look at. And then there's an internal O-ring. The internal O-ring seals around this deal. And you'll see this hole right here in the piston. That's where the fluid comes out and gets under the piston. So you have an internal O-ring here. The external O-ring is here. Um, the internal O-ring is a little more difficult to get out. You can kind of squeeze it and pull it out a lot of times if you can't, and you're going to reuse it. Take a little pocket screwdriver. Be careful. Don't stab it. Just uh, You can get up under it, poke it out, and look at it. Um, these things look fine. If there's no flat spots on them, they're not going to be uh, – they're either going to be broken and the internal will either be broken in 10 pieces, 10, 11 pieces, or it generally will be okay. There's, there's not a, a wear surface life on this. These things look good. I'm gonna put it right back into service. Um, again, if this is a customer's torque converter or a converter that I don't know anything about, I'm gonna clean this stuff a lot better. I'm going to make sure that this thing is perfect. Uh, I just assembled this thing two runs ago. 
and I, I went through it all, it's fine. Same way as this. If this has got material in it, if it's got debris, if it's got anything in there, the drive cover is okay, okay to clean in the parts washer, the sonic cleaner, however you want to clean it. It's aluminum. It can be, um, it can be perfectly clean. This thing has no debris in it. It's fine. And I don't know when we're going to go racing again because of the pandemic. So I'm going to leave some fluid in there. Um, and I'm actually going to pour some fluid in the converter when we're done. Uh, the way this thing works, I don't know if we went through this. Uh, your steels have uh, external lugs that lock into the drive cover. And the they'll, they'll actually space the clutch pack. Then your clutches have internal lugs that engage with the turbine hub. And, and that's how the clutches uh, apply to the steels and lock up. Always start with the steel on the bottom, clutch on top. Otherwise you can take it out and work on it again. So this thing looks good. Um, for lubricant for this, a lot of people use different stuff. I use Lucas uh, Extreme High Pressure Grease. Everybody's like, oh, it won't dissolve in your transmission fluid. Uh, It'll hurt your blah, blah, blah. You can eat this stuff. You can put it on your pancakes. It's, it's fine. It actually helps it out. Put a little bit on there. Get a little bit on there. Same thing. Squirt a little bit around the outside, a little bit around the inside. You can use ATF. This is not a, not a, something that's critical. Now, there's alignment flats on this piston that line this thing up. You'll see the hex, hex flats on the piston, hex flats in the drive cover. When that O-ring goes over the top right there, you just want to be a little careful pushing it in. Um, the, the, the internal one will hit that top of that drive cover first. You'll align the flats and just be gentle. It'll fall right down on there. Like, and you'll get to this place. The internal's already engaged. We're good there. Now all we have to do is walk the internal around. Do not, the external around. Do not just grab this thing and shove it down. It'll cut the O-ring. Uh, you get to take it back out and look at it and enjoy it. You get to call me and send it to me and I get to charge you a bunch of money to service it. Put a, a thumb on each side, grab this thing. What you're looking for is air to hit you in the face out of that hole. You'll hear it and you're gonna hear it in a second. And when air hits you in the face, that thing is in there and it's sealed and it's good. Do not take it back out and look at it. So you wanna you want just walk a little bit there, spin it, walk a little bit. You'll see it's going down 30 to 40 thousandths a push. When I get, hear that? That thing's in there, in like flinch, ready. Piston is back in there. Our clutch pack looked good. We're going to reinstall. Um, remember, steel at the bottom. And then you're gonna alternate a disc and a steel. And a disc. When you guys mix this up and blow it up, just send it to me, we'll get it fixed for you. I've done it and so has most everyone else. When you get this thing done, I'm gonna show you the easiest way to line it up. The first time I did this, I think it took me like four hours to get this turbine back in. I called up Marty. I was like, what kind of specialty tool do you guys have? And he's like, just line it up. I'll show you how I got it, how I do it. Now when you get this in there, you can look and see that you have a steel, a clutch, steel, a clutch, steel, a clutch all the way out. Clutch disc all the way on top with the turbine. Uh, piston is all the way down. You can see that that's there. The next thing I do is, so I do not forget, is I take my bearing and race combo. Remember bearing, remember kids? Race, bearing, race. Don't mix that up. The way I do this, and I'm gonna let you guys see, uh, this can be a, a, a pain. If you do it like I do it, it's not too bad. Um, I take a screwdriver. And I go in there and I just line the internal tangs up on the clutches. And I'll do this side, and then I'll do this side, and I'll go around and do this side. Because dropping that turbine in and spinning it, trying to line those up like you normally would an automatic is very difficult. Um, at least for me it is. It's a lot of clutch disc uh, surface area, and there's not really a lot to grab to around the inside of that thing. So once you do that, again, make sure you don't have your race here because you've already installed it. Set it in the middle. You can see where the grooves are on that deal. Just line the hub up on the bottom of the turbine. All right, and it'll kind of sit there. If you look, you can get that thing dead centered. And if you hold your mouth right, you're living right, it'll fall right in there. And if you're not living right. All right, 
Now, one mistake I see a lot is we think that this is bottomed out. You think you got it all the way in there. You can't just push one side and think it's not gonna lift up because the way it sits on that bearing and race and that clutch pack, it won't do that. The next thing I do to make sure that it's perfect is I will install my bearing and race on top of the turbine. Remember, race, bearing, race. Then I pull my outside seal off. Stick my stator in there. Be a good time to check that your sprag is turning to the right and it's good. All right, put my top bearing on there. And then I'm gonna drop my, my pump on there. With no O-ring on there, if you drop that pump on there and that pump is sitting dead flat on top of here and you have no gap, then your turbine is all the way down. If you get there and that thing's got space, if you can spin it and it's up like that, you're, you're, you still have another clutch pack to go. You need to wiggle it and get it to drop or take the turbine back out and start all over. Once it gets here, I know I'm good to go and ready for final assembly. All right, stator's inside, stator spins free, turbine is good, you can spin it. You're spinning a clutch pack. Uh, the, sharp, the tops of these, these blades are, are sharp, like don't grab it like I just did because now I'm bleeding all over the place. Um, but you can spin that thing and, and it'll turn on the clutch pack. Stator's in there, you're good to go. Uh, next thing that you're gonna do <laughs> is clean this O-ring. Okay, I see people gorilla snot the O-ring on there. I see them uh, put all kind of stuff to stop the O-ring from falling out. If you will wipe that thing down and then you will get all the transmission fluid out of your groove right here. That's the key. And get this thing dry, that O-ring will not pop up when you <laughs> reinstall it. Uh, if you do not do that, it will hydraulically push this O-ring out and you get to install it, crank it up, it gets the leak fluid out of the bell housing and then you get to take it all back out and look at it. Make sure that thing is flat. Make sure it's all the way around through there. She's good to go. Uh, next thing. Okay, there's two dowel holes in this drive cover. Uh, when you saw me knock out the dowel pins, those are offset. This, they do that because this, this, this hub is trued up with the converter. It's the last thing that they machine when they're done. So you want to make sure that when you set this down, that your dowel holes are lined up. My dowel, I got a dowel pin here. So what I'll do is I'll spin that thing where the dowel pin, I can see down through it, and then I just look on the other side. Okay, I'm not lined up. So that means I'm 180 out on my dowel hole. Spin that bad boy. That one's good, and that one's good. All right, I know how that goes. The first thing you're going to want to do when you set this thing down is you're going to want to look at the O-ring. Do not peek at the O-ring. Don't stare at it. Don't look at it. Don't want to take it out on a date because when you pop this cover back up to look at it, it's going to pop out. So take that bad boy. One last little look at the O-ring. Set her down and never stare at it again. Um, pretty simple then. I will put four bolts in it. Always start these by hand. This thing's very expensive. It's billet aluminum and it's a fine thread bolt. Do not grab your impact and ram these things in. I'll start them with my fingers and then I got a, a little quarter inch uh, impact that I'll use, but do not uh, ram them all in there. So you wanna get all of them started. I will snug up four of them. Um, I'm not gonna start them all so you guys don't have to sit and wait. All of them will be started, I'll snug up four. Notice I'm barely hitting them. When I say snug them, I'm not tightening the things up. All right, then when I do that, I'm going to knock my dowel pins in. When you put your bolts in, don't put the bolts in right by the dowel pin. You'll have thread hanging out, you'll hit your dowel pin, um, and then you'll tear your bolts up, and it's not very fun. Now, if you have this thing completely clean, there's no fluid, you can bend it, flip it over and set it on the snout. I normally just grab it. Give that thing the old taparuski. Grab the Erden. Flat, she's high and tight. All right, you're gonna put all the rest, all your bolts in. If you don't have them started, start them all by hand. 
You're gonna snug these things down in a star-shaped fashion. Boom, 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 boom. And then you're gonna torque them. If you've got a titanium bolt, regardless, I pull them to 22 and a half. I don't know why I have the half. It's just, I like to come up with weird numbers. But I'm gonna click that thing to 22 and a half. 22 to 23 foot-pounds. It's a 5 16 fine thread bolt is fine. Um, there is no good way to hold this thing. I've come up with jigs and stuff all over the road, all over the thing to hold it. What I do is after they're all zipped down, the best way to do it is to bear hug that thing, grab your torque wrench and click it. Uh, pull all those to 22 and a half, dump you a little fluid in there, and you're ready to go. Uh, always look in the top and make sure I can spin it and I can independently spin the torque, uh, the stator and the turbine, uh, and that thing's ready to go back in and go in the car. This has been a brief description of lockup torque converter uh, and how to service and check it. If you guys have any specific sub questions, submit them to our YouTube channel. I'll be sure to get back to it. Um, and I appreciate you guys watching and I look forward to seeing you guys on the racetrack soon.